Welcome, this is your favorite celebrity lecturer. Today we'll be looking at gluconeogenesis. In our previous lecture, we looked at glycolysis, which is the breakdown of glucose to pyruvate. But today we'll be looking at gluconeogenesis, which means the production of glucose, either from pyruvate, lactate, or any of the non-carbohydrate uh, molecules. Because gluconeogenesis is actually the production of glucose for non-carbohydrate precursors. So what we use in producing glucose will not be from carbohydrates. Because our major aim is to preserve the carbohydrate storage. So we need to get more glucose from non-carbohydrate precursors. So in order to do that, remember I mentioned the three major steps in glycolysis that are irreversible. Conversion of uh, glucose to glucose, for which is catalyzed by hexokinase, is irreversible. Conversion of uh, fructose 6-phosphate or fructose 1-6-bisphosphate, which is catalyzed by PFK1, is irreversible. Conversion of PEP, which is phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate is actually irreversible. So these are the three major steps that are different from glycolysis. Every other enzyme, every other step is the same thing between gluco gluconeogenesis and glycolysis. But these steps that are irreversible, there must be a way where we can actually bypass those steps. So in the first case is conversion of uh, pyruvate to oxaloacetate. So pyruvate is carboxylated using the enzyme pyruvate carboxylate. That enzyme requires the hydrolysis of ATP to form ADP plus inorganic phosphate. So that reaction will give us oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate that is now formed will be catalyzed by PEP carboxykinase, which is phosphorinol pyruvate carboxykinase. So that means there is the carboxylation and also phosphorylation. Of that particular step so the enzyme does two things together decarboxylation and phosphorylation but the phosphate group is coming from gtp instead of atp now i told you whenever you see the word kinase in our previous lecture have to do with phosphorylation either from atp gtp uh, any of the high energy uh phosphate group like the utt and the rest so now the pyruvate that is now the PEP that is now formed will now go back through the glycolytic pathway, which is the same enzyme. So once we have bypassed this pyruvate step, we have by bypassed it to form uh, PEP. The PEP will now be acted upon by enolase to form 2 phosphoglycerate. The same process goes through till we get to the third step, which is the combustion of fructose 6-phosphate, 1-6-bisphosphate, to fructose 6-phosphate. So that enzyme is catalyzed by fructose. Okay, let's take a moment and subscribe to the channel. Click on the subscription button and also the notification bell for more updates. So cis uh, fructose 1 cis bisphosphate is this is bisphosphate. So in this reaction, there is a removal of the phosphate group from the carbon from the carbon one of position one of the fructose 1 cis bisphosphate to form fructose 6 Phosphate. So you can see the bypass or circumventing of that particular reaction step. So once we get the fructose 6-phosphate, the next enzyme, which is the phosphoglucoisomerase, which is a reversible, which is a reversible process, will reverse the glucose to form fructose 6-phosphate. Then the uh, revert the glucose fructose 6-phosphate to, to glucose 6-phosphate. So this glucose 6-phosphate that is produced now we have to be converted to glucose. So, but in the liver, the liver is, the liver actually expressed this enzyme, which is called glucose 6-phosphatase. The enzyme will cleave out phosphate group. The enzyme will cleave out the phosphate group at the position 6 to form glucose. So, the liver can produce glucose from non-carbohydrate precursor. So this is what happens in the liver. The liver will convert, because the liver actually, is, actually expresses this enzyme. So this enzyme will convert the glucose, this phosphate to glucose. The glucose that is now produced will be pushed into the bloodstream and be supplied to other cells or organs that rely majorly on glycolysis or their primary source of energy is glucose. So but for the muscle, it's actually quite different. The muscle stores glycogen. But the muscle doesn't mobilize glycogen or the which is the, which is the product of glycogen which is the glucose 
to other cells. So rather, the muscle is actually selfish. So the muscle stored glycogen will be converted to, from glycogen to glucose one phosphate to glucose six phosphate, and glycolysis will continue in the muscle. But because of the muscle lack this enzyme, but for adventure, if the muscle actually expresses this enzyme, it means that the muscle can convert the glycogen stored into glucose. But the muscle cannot do that. So the only organ that can do that is the liver. So when I was in my, I think third year, third year uh, when we were doing introduction to carbohydrate metabolism, we were asked in our exam that the liver is selfless. Why the muscle is selfish with respect to carbohydrate metabolism justify the claim. So for you to understand the question, you must have a grasp and knowledge of glucose neogenesis in gluconeogenesis for the for the muscle cell for the liver cells that stored the excess uh, glucose in the form of glycogen remember after well fed after